after after the war, and uh, so we we went down there and and uh, before we got there. I had to put uh, put a sprinkling system on the ship that would sprinkle that we could hook hook up to the fire main and have water go all over the ship to wash any of the, to to, to d dilute any atomic fallout nice. and stuff right. and um, one night um, we we would they, they would get us up, say, early in the morning and say, if you want to watch an atomic bomb go off, um, they, here's some glasses to hold over your eyes. So the dark, dark, darkened glasses. And um, so then you'd stand there and they'd say, OK, get ready to watch. And they'd tell you which area to, which area to watch. And you'd see a big flash. That's all. All you usually see. They're doing it on islands. We were. We, I, we were on a ship, but I don't know where they. Where they, they were. were the, the bombs were going off, whether they were uh, dropping them from planes or whether they were shooting them off in rockets or what, or whether they were underwater bombs or what. I have no idea what they were, but uh, one night the. Uh, an officer, uh, the officer of the deck, got the word that uh, from the from the beach that there was uh, fallout from a, a previous atomic uh, explosion, and and so and they told him to uh, check his uh, background readings, and so uh, he checked it and he thought they were a little bit too high and he says he went to the PA system and he says all hands man your battle station. All hands up, atomic attack, atomic attack. All hands man your battle stations. Well, a lot of the guys were sleeping topside. So some of them had their duty, their battle station was below deck. So some of them grabbed their, their mattress and stuff and took it down below deck, therefore taking some of the <laughs> atomic particles down below decks. <laughs> there were people down below decks that battle, their battle stations was topside. Mm -hmm. So they come up and got contaminated. And a lot of the people that were topside, their battle stations were below decks and they would take all the stuff down below deck. Well, it just happened that there wasn't that much high radiation. There was a little place they found, a couple places that they found that was a little bit on the high side, but it wasn't bad. So they just washed it off. That's all they did. But they're the next day. But they, we, they uh, finally told us, the ship fitters, and the carpenters, the carpenter mates, to go ahead and set up the decontamination station, which we had, we had set up. But go ahead and open it up. And they sent everybody through the, dam the decontamination station. And then we had people out there with uh, meters and um, would say, OK, you're all right. Or no, we got to take your shirt, or we got to take your shoes, or something. So um, but anyway, uh, of course, that that uh, officer, uh, every time we, we, we would pass him somewhere, we'd say, atomic attack, atomic attack. <laughs> 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 and uh, I think we had practically everybody on the ship to, uh, going with us on that. <laughs> but uh, it was an, it, it was interesting to me. What? So, uh, you said you just saw a flash. There was no noise or anything. Or Did what? When the atomic bomb was detonated, you just saw a flash. There was no That's noise. That's all. You just saw a flash. Did you hear anything? Uh, it's possible we heard. I don't know. That, uh, Not enough to make an impression on you. Uh, I don't. <laughs> uh, how many do you think you saw? How many did you watch? Oh, a couple. But the, uh, the one that impressed me most was one that Marge and I saw together. Oh, one together? <laughs> <laughs> what? And our, 
Uh-huh. And our, going to Japan or coming home? Coming home. Coming home from Japan. We were coming home from Japan. <laughs> They and uh, they, they passed the word that they uh, were going to be t- sending a rocket uh, 50 miles in the air and exploding a, uh, an atomic attack. And of course, the, news, uh, the ship's newspaper was getting information from the different places and saying that some of the th- scientists didn't think this was a good idea, that it might open up the atmosphere to radi- uh, other types of radiation and so forth. But anyway, uh, they, t- they said, well, the blast would be about 8 o'clock at night after dark. And so we'd go up there, and they said, you didn't, we wouldn't need dark glasses or anything, because it was over 50 miles up in the air. And uh, so we'd go up there and we'd wait and wait and wait. And finally they say, uh, well, they've called it off for today. <laughs> so then they say, well, the next day they'd say, it's, it's back on, they're going to send the rocket up. Well, we went up about three or four different nights and they kept saying they're going to blast it off and they didn't. So finally, I, th- I think it was our son that he finally, or was it the daughter, finally said, uh, I'm not going to stand up here, <laughs> I'm going to go to bed. So he went off to bed. Well, anyway, they lit it off one night, but oh. we finally found out why they kept putting it off because they were they were counting the amount of Russian vehicles that were in the area ships and and uh, submarines and so forth that were in the area is the reason that they were they were putting it off they didn't have have all, all of them they, but anyway uh, they finally uh, set off this atomic attack and it <coughs> opened up like it, it opened an area that was like this all the way across from the northernmost part of the of and down to the south. You saw this beautiful area there. It was it was beautiful. It was like day, it? Daytime. It just lit up. Huh? Lit, yeah. up lit up like daytime and it was really. But you beautiful. could see then dark oh. darkness off to the side. <laughs> but it it just looked like hey they opened the atmosphere. <laughs> it was kind of scary. You know. <clears throat> Oh, you just wanted, can you describe it more, like what shape it was, or? Well, it was just like a big arch, mm. is what it was, and it just went, and it wasn't real wide, and it was, uh, well, it was long, it just went from one horizon to the other, and it seemed like, if I remember correctly, it probably was like from the south all the way up to the north. Uh, do you remember it being any particular colors? <gasps> Yellowish. Oh, yellowish, kind of yellow. and I think there's a lot of different Bright colors whites. in it. Just, yeah, it, it was beautiful. Was there any noise, uh, again, noise? any noise with it? No, no. It was just no, silent. No, no, it was a, real silent. It was, it was 50 miles in the air, and by that time the... Uh, <clears throat> oh, we're just wondering, uh, now that you've seen them detonated, atomic bombs, you had any opinions or feelings about atomic bombs in general? Or? Not a good idea. No. <laughs> They're not safe. <laughs> <laughs> it's too bad. In a way, it's too bad it, it ever, uh, they ever invented the atomic bombs, but it did cause the, war to, the World War II to end with the Japanese. Mm-hmm. And I, I firmly believe, a lot of, along with a lot of people, that it saved a lot of American and Japanese lives, even though it cost a lot of Japanese lives. It, they were not ready to surrender, and they were arming themselves with everything they could get, pitchforks or anything else they could get hold of, and they were training the people to do, to go in and uh, fight. Uh, just in general, about uh, you were in Japan, so anything about Japanese culture and sort of how they felt about World War II and how you're a cadet? You had a friend who was a cadet? We didn't much talk about the, uh, the war with them at all. Um, like I say, I knew a uh, captain that had been in the uh, Japanese Navy and worked, worked with him. Um, he didn't speak much much English, if, if any, and um, 
Uh, he wants to know. <laughs> um, your friend, the, the cadet. Uh, if, if he had, can you give us his name and you know, maybe we could send him a video or something? Well, you, you, you mean the cadets? That we your, your friend, the cadet. Yeah. The co yeah. Shigemura. Yeah. Shigemura. Yeah, uh, the last we heard was that uh, he, his wife was up in the Yokosuka area, no, y Yokohama area, and uh, so he moved up there to a small apartment to be near her, with her, and uh, what he, we haven't uh, been in contact with him much lately, so we don't know what the... She ended up with Alzheimer's, and she was still young. Uh, Oh, did you, uh, yeah, we wanted to hear about the uh, Tokyo Express. Oh, the Tokyo Express. Well, there, were, uh, there was a um, group of uh, Japanese ships that uh, for some time before we got into battle with them, they were, they were down there and there, we would hear that the, they would get in, in the battle with other, some of our ships. And they, uh, whenever they went down there, they were escorting uh, troop and uh, cargo ships down there, down the, to different islands to resupply that, uh, their, their men and to go and invade other islands that to, w anybody wasn't on and set up, set up uh, places for uh, to, to fight from and to try and get airfields to uh, set up to bomb bomb us and everything. But um, uh, there was uh, the, some of the other uh, Tokyo Expresses that I understand were more devastating than ours was. There was other ships, the cruisers, and, uh, that were in battles with, a, with them before we ever got there. But it, it probably wasn't the same group of ships. It was just a a group of ships that were being were supplying and being escorted to resupply, and that they called them Tokyo Express. And when we heard that they were coming down a certain way into Kolombangara and, and uh, Kula Gulf, we went uh, went out looking for them. And like I say, they found us. Hold the picture up. And, is that where they yeah, took this, your bow off? Yeah, that's the ones that, that they took off. On uh, uh, well, July, July 6th, uh, 1943, uh, is when we got in our first battle with them. And that's when we lost our sister ship. And maybe, a, a, I don't know whether we lost a destroyer that time or not. But uh, we, got out, as we got out of that, uh, as soon as they, they stopped, Firing at us, and we stopped firing at them. We hightailed it, and we left a, a destroyer back there to pick up as many survivors from the Helen as we as they could. And uh, some of the sailors uh, were able to get over to that weren't picked up were able to get over to an island. And uh, the next morning, they sent somebody down there to see if there was anybody around, and they found these sailors on that island. They they brought them back. But um, we went into uh, Tulagi, I think it was, and there was a repair ship there. 